Mad Strong. I'm a member of the Coordinating Committee of WELL, which stands for Willits Economic Localization. I'd like to tell you a little bit about WELL and about the town in which it was formed. Uh, the town of Willits is located on Highway 101, about 140 miles north of San Francisco. In the city limits, there are about 5,000 population, and in the surrounding area, there's about 8,000 more. This community had a number of qualities that attracted young and idealistic people uh, starting in the 1970s or maybe even before. They were seeking an alternative to the costly and unsustainable life that they were experiencing there. And they were attracted to the, the beautiful environment of Willits as well as this very interesting uh, cultural mix of people here in the town. They were seeking a place and a community that was more compatible with nature and surrounded by nature. One of the early manifestations of this influx of new energy to our area was the birth of the solar energy movement here. I like to look at history uh, to help me see where we might be going in the future. So I would encourage everyone to take a look at this. and. Um, uh, starting really with the uh, Mother Earth News back in 1970 telling us that we should all move to the country and buy a piece of land. And uh, many of us did. That's, that's how we got up here. Uh, the Mendocino grapevine, for those of you that were around in the 70s, started here in Willits, California. Um, Simple Living Workshop started in 1975. And the, uh, the most recent one was in Boonville last weekend. And uh, these fairs are probably more relevant today than they, they were when they first started. Those events really led to a very exciting four-year period uh, from 1990 through 1994, and it was called the Solar Energy Expo and Rallies. Many of these new residents chose to live off the grid. Some of them fought some of the old building code requirements and started building yurts and straw bale houses and other alternative structures. Some also worked to preserve the remaining old growth redwood trees and to promote uh, selective logging rather than clear cutting. One person who was very attracted to what was going on in Willits a few decades later was a very young uh, biologist who was a professor at the University of California at Davis. He voiced many of the concerns that he and others of us were having at that time in this video clip from about 2004 or 5. This faulty premise that we can always keep expanding human population and human consumption of resources, how does that perpetuate? I think what it happens is this, is essentially you have this, this physical reality based upon the availability of fossil fuel energy, which essentially allows us to raise our short-term carrying capacity of the planet um, tremendously. We are able to now organize the resources of our planet to support more and more people and more and more consumptive lifestyles to a point where it's gone on for so long and we've met so many challenges that in its essence we developed a, a culture that reinforces the idea that there are no real consequences to our actions because even if there's a short-term problem we will have the ingenuity and the ability to solve it the society in general then has generation after generation going back with that belief system and those set of expectations. And so to be able to turn that around when all anyone who's alive today can see is just, you know, this, this era of human progress that's, that goes back to the past and they assume is going to stretch out to the future and is embedded in, all, in, in the laws and the habits that people have. Uh, it's just sort of a positive feedback loop. So there you see this cultural constraint then on change that becomes very, very dangerous because when that is challenged, it's challenging generations of belief and assumptions. And what happens is that those who challenge it are essentially putting themselves outside of their own culture. And that becomes very difficult to, to handle as an individual psychologically and emotionally because you're constantly going to be you're going to also be looking at your own culture and seeing oh my gosh it's crazy it's crazy and yet the culture will look back at you and say you're crazy 
and it becomes a, um, a matter of, you know, understanding epistemology. How do you know what you know? Most people know what they know based upon what their culture has taught them over time, unquestioning. And then there are, there are people who actually have, you know, have to study the raw data and they're trained as scientists to have their belief system based upon evidence. And when that, when that contradicts, you know, generations of belief, they're just like, hear no evil, see no evil, you know, please, you know, get out of my face, I can't handle this. And um, that became incredibly frustrating to me. You know, I have, I have kids, um, I, want, I want, you know, peace on earth, I want all good things, and yet I found that people that also want those things, unable to realize that, um, you know, th that we're all a huge part of this problem. Jason, along with many others who gathered around, uh, formed the group called Well, Well, It's Economic Localization. The organization had a few growing pains, uh, but we gradually became a nonprofit, and our vision is an enduring local economy that provides health and security for our community. This organization has become one of the models for the Transition Town movement internationally. From its inception, well supplemented many local discussion groups and research and film showings with inviting guest speakers, many of them internationally and nationally known, such as Michael Rupert, Richard Heinberg, David Corton, Derek Jensen, many others. Hello, Willits. <laughs> what a long, strange trip this has been. I mean, I was first through here in 2002. Willits is a very special place. It was here that the, I think really the first significant organized steps to recognize peak oil and to move towards sustainability were taken. Well continues to hold many forums and invite guest speakers on many issues including the environment, global climate change, peak oil, food and water, um, local as well as nationally, financial viability, and health and our community.
in addition to this sort of educational work, Well continues to uh, serve as a clearinghouse for many groups and organizations that are working on various aspects of localization and building self-reliance in our community. In other cases, it seems like people and organizations have sprung up on their own uh, with similar concerns and similar ideas. For some years now, we've been uh, coming once a month to see the Now and Then film series. Could you tell us how that started? Uh, this would go back to uh, uh, mid-October of 2004. There was a, a film showing uh, of a film called End of Suburbia. Um, I think there was about 70 people there. Extraordinary. City council members. Uh, a supervisor, a um, lot of interest. Uh, uh, we had a few more showings and uh, moved it over to the uh, um, uh, Willits Community Center and we started showing this film every two weeks and new people kept showing up and word of mouth it was going just viral and um, it was just terrific and uh, after a while it was time to show something new. So, uh, I started showing films at the library on sustainability. So we've shown over 80 films uh, in the last seven years. Uh, and we're trying to make it, uh, the experience here a little more uplifting. We'll show, we'll show uh, 
solution-oriented films, and then at the end of the film, uh, we like to uh, open it up to the guests who have shown up here tonight and uh, popcorn, some Q&A, and, um, and see what's on people's mind and see how they resonated with the uh, experience that they just took in. It's, you know, we like to think it's educational. And, um, there's always new folks showing up, and uh, we're delighted when we see younger people coming. I don't want to say we're doing this for them, but um, you know, we want them to step up to the plate because uh, you know, they're our future and not too many of us are getting younger. In fact, I don't know anybody that's getting younger. So we need them to step up and to show up. And I want to pass all of this on. I want to see other people doing this. I want to be in the audience. Uh, but I'm still having fun doing it, and as long as I am, I'm going to continue doing it. In some cases, Well has initiated its own projects, and in others, it has funded other organizations and individuals who have taken initiative on new projects. Like the Transition Town message, it's not really important for any one organization to take ownership of this whole movement. It's uh, bigger than all of us and we're all part of it.